Hi, Kalia. Thank you for joining okay. us. Your question for Kalia, you can raise your hand. We'll get started with Jim Paul Dennings from The Athletic. Hey, Kalia, I've got a few questions for you, if you don't mind answering sort of three questions on three very different topics. Um, my first one is, I was curious, you've talked a lot about your experience coaching at Purdue University Northwest and sort of how it changed, coaching changed the way you sort of saw the game and the coach-player relationship. I'm curious, when you were going into that experience, is that something you expected or did that take you by surprise, how it changed you as a player? Uh, I think it, it definitely took me by surprise because, um, you know, that, that opportunity came up um, such last minute and I just um, thought of it as a, not a, like a way to keep busy, but kind of a way to, to keep busy, um, but have access to a gym. <laughs> so um, for that experience to really impact me um, while I was in my off season, it was just amazing. Um, and then my second question is that James had said earlier during this playoff run that during that losing streak at the beginning of the season that he questioned himself and, and what he meant by that was sort of like if his messaging was getting through to the team well enough and reaching you guys at the right place, did something change after that losing streak? Like did the messaging or sort of how he was communicating or how the team was communicating change after that? I think our, our staff um, does a really good job in their, their leadership styles and how they can um, pull the greatness out of each individual player. You know, also what I learned from coaching is um, everybody gets coached differently. You know, um, he might yell at me to, you know, get me going, but he might not do the same for salute or like, if you understand what I'm saying, but I think that um, for our coaching staff, they did a really good job just trying to figure out how they could pull out the best out of each individual player. Cool. And then my last question, and I promise I'll shut up after that. Um, when you got to Chicago, did you ever imagine there would be a time when you were playing in an environment like last night or that you would show up to a game and someone like Chance the Rapper was going to be wearing your uniform? Never did I imagine. No. What do you think that means for Chicago then? And women's basketball in Chicago? I think that it's 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 really big. Um, I really just appreciate, you know, the city just coming out and really supporting us and um, Chance the Rapper just really coming out and really giving us the energy also. I think it just, it, it means a lot. Thank you. Eric Wilson. Uh, as always, I appreciate your time. Uh, over the last two seasons, you've really evolved and emerged as a superstar in this league. With what you've done so far, I have to ask you, what can we expect from you tomorrow? Um, I'm just trying to be consistent. Um, I think it's important for me to, to bring everything that I bring. Um, it's, it's not just about the, the scoring, it's the energy, no, it's the defense. Um, and I think that that's just what I have to bring. I just have to consistently bring everything that I can bring to the table in order for us to be successful. Your evolution this season with the addition of Candace Parker has really been shown on the court. Can you just, if you don't mind sharing one or two things that she has said to you to really, that has really stuck with you throughout this season? Um, she said a lot. Um, I just think that um, her just challenging me every single day, you know, um, challenging me and genuinely believing in me, giving me that confidence, just telling me what I have to do in order for us to be successful. Um, and I'm like, okay, like I, I got you. Like she hold me to a, a really high, high standard. Um, and I just appreciate it because she like challenges me, but she knows what I'm, what, what I'm capable of. So I just, I'm just grateful for her. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.
Kelly. I will ask another question. I mean, if there's time. <laughs> Leah, if you can see people's hands up, you can probably just call on people too. Okay, no Wilkes. No Wilkes. Hey Kyle, how you doing? I'm good, how are you? I'm good. Uh, just wanna let you know the whole city of Philly is, is behind you and we support you 100% in the city. Um, my question to you is, you guys are on a cusp of winning a championship. Uh, last night, Ali said you guys just have to play within yourself because they know, because she knows Phoenix is going to come out. Um, what is some of the things Candace has relayed to the team going into game four um, with her having the experience about you guys not getting too high or too low? I think um, literally right after the game, you know, we were so excited. Um, we brought, we brought it in and we were just, um, breaking down our huddles and Candace is just like, like, it's not over. Um, like, yeah, let's celebrate this and let's enjoy this tonight. She was like, but tomorrow, like we're right back to business. Um, and I think she put so much emphasis on that because she's been there and, um, she, we're just so locked in because, um, she's just telling us like how important this is and how she had chances to close it out at home. And, um, how things went, but I think that her, from her experience, I think we're taking it so serious. Thank you. Uh, hey, Clea, uh, this is Jackie Powell with Bleacher Report. Um, so I, I spoke to Eric uh, Tebow from the Mystics yesterday about you, and um, he was talking to me about something he remembers from your rookie year was just how steady of a player um, you are, and he remembers you to be and that's that's not something that's common uh, when a player enters the league. That's what he told me. So where do you think you get that steadiness from? And how has it helped you sort of stay the course through this, you know, up and down regular season and into the postseason? Uh, I couldn't tell you where I get the steadiness from, but um, I just know that like this season we had we were faced with so much adversity, you know, um, but we were, we were locked in so tight that um, we knew what we were capable of with, with everyone. And, you know, even when we didn't have everyone, we, we knew we had enough, you know, some of the, some of the games that we lost, they were, they were so tight. Those games are so tight and it comes down to the little things. So we just knew that at, at full strength, what we could be, um, and we were, I think our, our genuine chemistry and our, our love for each other really takes us over that, that small hump. So we just embraced the adversity during that time and uh, we knew we would get through it. And so how do you personally, I guess, contribute to that chemistry? Uh, I just try to bring energy, you know, um, I think it, it even as small as handshakes, you know, I'm, I'm getting slewed out of her comfort zone, making her dance before the games, you know, just getting her hype, getting her ready. Um, I think that the, those small things outside of basketball makes a, a really big difference. Um, everybody's everybody having a handshake with everybody makes everybody feel good. You know, it's not just with the starters. It's we're having, we're having fun and we're just getting ourselves ready to play the game that we love to play. But I think that those small things really make a difference. Lovely. And finally, and for me, and then I'll pass the mic, I promise. Um, I'm curious if you can take me through how you've been a part of this defensive evolution for the sky. Um, I know this has been something that in years past, the team has struggled with, and you've sort of been there through it. Uh, I think that we've, we knew offensively what we can do. Um, but we know um, in order to win a championship, you know, we got to get stops. So um, I think from the beginning of the season, it was just more emphasis on defense. And I think James and Candace was really on me this year about being that person for us defensively. Um, and it was a real challenge. Um, it was every day they were yelling at me every day, like, get to help, get here, do this, do that. And just looking back on that um, and them really pushing me and just expecting me to, you know, get stops every possession against the guys. So um, I, I just, I appreciate that. Um, I appreciate them challenging me and really believing in me. 
Um, and I think that that was a major catalyst for us, um, me setting the tone defensively and just giving the team the energy, you know, when, when we're getting stops and um, just celebrating those small moments and just getting everybody involved. Everybody wants to get the stop. Thank you so much and good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Stephanie from NBC Sports. Hi, hi, Kali, how are you doing? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing well, I'm doing well. Um, you and your team have a chance to win the Sky's first title in front of a sold out home crowd. Is that something that you and your teammates talk about or think about going in? And my second uh, part to that question is, what would that mean to you uh, to win your first career title at home? Uh, I think we, we think about it, but we're just trying not to, you know, get too far ahead of ourselves. Um, I think we have an, an appropriate fear because we know that Phoenix is a really good team, but um, we're just trying to go in confident and, you know, not, not letting up, you know, still coming in and throwing the first punch and trying to really set the tone. Um, but for me to win my first uh, championship, um, I'm just excited. Like, this is what I want. Uh, I just want to win. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't, nothing else matters. Um, I think that me winning a, a championship will, will speak for itself. Thank you. Nov Wilkes. I didn't have another question, Kelly. My hand was just up, sorry. No problem, Rafiq Lewison. This is Rafiq, who went about that sports talk. Congratulations on winning game three. Thank you. I want to ask you, what are some enjoyments that you had during the first three games of your first WNBA Finals appearance? You said, I'm sorry, what'd you say? What are some enjoyments you had from your first three games of the WNBA Finals? Uh, I've just been enjoying these, these crowds. Um, Phoenix crowd was great. You know, their courtside fans talk trash. Um, I enjoyed coming back to Chicago, you know, having this, this sold out crowd. I'm just loving the energy that are, that are in these gyms supporting women's basketball. And what are the struggles that you had towards working on your fast break offensive scoring since most of the points you had in the wins came on the fast break? What was the question? Sorry. What are some of the struggles you had when you're working on your fast break offensive scoring? Struggles? Yes. Um, I don't know. I don't think I've, I haven't had any struggles. And last yeah. question for me. Yesterday, Diane Tar when I asked both of Diane Tarasi about the team total, about you holding, about your team holding the Phoenix Mercury to 50 points, she talked about going better than 50. We, what is your team doing to keep up with Phoenix Mercury when they have a much better offensive game than the ones they've had when you defeat them in game three? I think we have to lock in on our game plan. Um, I think that with how we're playing, how aggressive that we're, how aggressive we're being, it's just important for us to continue to trust just the, the people behind you. Um, I think that we've genuinely started trusting each other um, and really just trying to be aggressive in everything that we're doing. And I think this is doing really well for us. Appreciate your insight and good luck in winning game four in your first Thank time. Thank you. Andy Costable sometimes. Hey, God, just um, one quick one for you. James has talked about you uh, off the court as being like quiet and humble and, and reserved in ways that we don't see when you're playing on the court. So what flip do you switch when you do get on the court and turn into, you know, obviously this incredible athlete that we all get to witness play? Uh, I don't... <laughs> I think that um, it's important for me to be able to flip that switch because I am just off the court. I'm super chill, you know, like you said, just reserved. Um, but just on the court, I just can't be that person. Uh, I have to, I have to play with the energy and play at a level um, in order for us to win. So uh, I think it's just, it's just my alter ego, I guess, huh? <laughs> yeah is there like a highlight reel you're playing in your head that gets you like into competitive mode are you like playing out scenarios where you've gone head to head with players maybe the Sophie Cunningham moment that that brings you to that level 
Nah, no highlight reels, no people. It's just going out there and playing. Got you. All right. Thanks, Kat. You're welcome. All right. That's it. Thank you, Kalia, for joining us. And thank you all. We'll see you before the game tomorrow. All right. Bye. Great Thanks, Kalia.